Today we're going to demonstrate the DCA75, the latest product from Peak Electronics, also known as the DCA Pro. Uh, I wanted to show you it's the package that it comes in. It's a little different from other Peak products that you might be familiar with because there's a little more to this one than others. The package includes this notice. Before you plug into your PC, you must read this. Be sure to read it. Yes, the DCA75 plugs into the PC, and I'll show you what that's all about a little later on. Comes with this very detailed user guide. Has all the information that you need to know about the DCA75, how it works, and what it does. Then, inside is a cable. Plug the DCA75 into the USB port on your PC. A flash memory, which has the software that you'll need to operate the DCA75 with your PC. And of course the DCA75 itself. Let's take a look at it. Okay, let's see what DCA75 can do. One of the beauties of it is, you don't have to know what the device you're testing is, nor even do you know, need to know what the pinout is. DCA75 will figure that all out for you. Let's see what we got here. So that's a PNP silicon bipolar transistor. There's the pinouts and the current gain. Also gives you a little schematic diagram of what the device looks like on a schematic. And it gives you the test conditions, collector current, base emitter voltage, base current. Also checks for leakage current. If there is any leakage current, it deducts that from the calculation of gain so that the current gain it gives you is accurate. Well, let's do another device here. This is a device in the popular TO220 package. There's lots of different components that come in that package. You may or may not know what the device is you're testing. It doesn't matter. DCA55 will figure it out. I'm sorry, DCA75. 55 is old one. Here we have an in-channel enhancement mode MOSFET. There's a schematic representation of it. There's the pinouts. When we look at it, it gives you the gate the source threshold voltage and the drain current. Very nice. Now let's try another device here. Let's say you've got a component that might be faulty. Say a bipolar transistor with an open collector. That's a common fault. They get overheated, the collector burns out. I'm going to simulate that by not connecting the collector lead. I've got one test lead open. That's going to simulate an open collector. See what DCA75 does with that. Says that it's a diode, gives you the pinout, gives you the threshold voltage. Now if you had connected all three leads to this not knowing that it was an open collector, you would know that you don't have a two terminal device, you've got a three terminal device. But DCA75 is telling you it's only two terminals are active, which means that the other terminal is open. You've got an open collector. All right, what about this? I've taken this transistor, and I've soldered a 10K ohm resistor between the base and the emitter. That's going to simulate testing this device in circuit. Because when you test it in circuit, which you can do, there's going to be other components in the circuit that are going to affect the readings. So let's see what DCA75 does with this one. It says it's an NPN Darlington transistor. There's the pinout, and it gives the gain. But notice in the schematic representation, it shows you the resistor between base and emitter. So the gain that it's calculated is the overall circuit gain, not just the device gain. Because some of that current that is going into the base lead is actually going through the resistor around the transistor, the gain is low. 
But, it, but DCA 75 tells you that. Okay, and there's a collector current. There's the base and middle voltage. And there's the base current. So DCA 75 detected there was another component in the circuit and told you about it. One of the really interesting things you can do with DCA 75 is check out light emitting diodes. Light emitting diodes are pretty simple, but they all have a different threshold voltage. And you can't tell what that threshold voltage is unless you've got the spec sheet, which you often don't have, or DCA 75, which will tell you what it is. Here we go. I want to hold this up there so you can see it flashing. It says that it's an LED. Gives you the pinout and the breakdown voltage, 1.692 volts. And the schematic representation has the two little arrows that show you it's a light emitting diode. Let's try another one here. Connect this LED up. See it flashing there? It's moving. This one has a th threshold voltage of 3.529 volts. So DCA75 can tell you all of that. All right. Very handy device. Useful to engineers, technicians, anybody who's involved with uh, repair or maintenance of electronic equipment. Uh, audiophiles love these because they allow them to match the output transistors they use in their audio output amplifiers. And indeed, anybody who uh, is involved with uh, any kind of a power output stage might want to be able to match their devices. DCA75 allows you to do that. Okay, let's move on now and see what happens when we connect DCA75 to our PC. Okay, let's take a look at what DCA75 does when you connect it to your PC. I've launched the DCA Pro application software and I've got this blank screen because we're not connected yet. I've connected a bipolar transistor to DCA75 and now I'm going to plug DCA75 into the USB port of the laptop. It does a test of the device. It says it's a PNP bipolar transistor. You get the pinouts nicely color coded to match the test lead colors. On the left hand side, all the characteristics of the device that you're testing. And on the right hand side, uh, all the capabilities of a DCA75 and some notes that are very helpful in understanding what's going on. Let's go to the curves. Okay, we're going to plot collector current versus collector emitter voltage. Collector currents on the vertical in milliamps, collector emitter voltage is on the horizontal in volts. Down at the bottom, we see the VCE range is going to go from 0 to 12 volts. There's going to be 51 data points for each trace. And the base current is going to go from 13 microamps to 65 microamps. And there's going to be a total of five traces. So here we go. There's the first trace for 65 microamps of base current. Now we're plotting 52 microamps of base current, 39 microamps, 26 microamps, 26 and finally 13 microamps. So there you have the characteristic curves of this particular device. Uh, information that you can use in a whole variety of ways, uh, whether you're designing a circuit or trying to analyze a circuit or how the device works in a particular circuit, or whether you just uh, simply want to check out what, what the component is uh, and, and uh, have it kicking around in your, in your uh, junk box or something, this will tell you what that device is and what it can do. Very useful information. Now I'm going to connect a MOSFET to the DCA75, the same MOSFET that we used previously, and uh, we'll see what we can learn about it. Okay, we'll go back to the identify screen, click on test, and here we go. That's again an N channel enhancement mode MOSFET. 
There's the pinouts nicely color coded on the left hand side of the screen over here are the characteristics of the device and a bunch of notes uh, on the use of DCA 75 and explanatory information very helpful. Now we'll go to the curves. This first one is going to be drain current versus drain, vo uh, drain source voltage. Drain current is on the vertical in milliamps. Drain source voltage is on the horizontal axis in volts. And down here we're going to vary the drain source voltage from 0 to 12 volts. We're going to have 51 points again on per, per trace. And the gate source voltage is going to vary from 3.3 volts to 3.4 volts. And we'll have a total of 5 traces. Here we go. This is gate source voltage of 3.3 volts. And now gate source voltage of 3.35 volts. DCA75 is actually applying these voltages to the device and plotting the results. 3.371 volts. Gate source voltage of 3.387 volts. And finally, 3.4 volts. There's a nice set of curves telling you those characteristics in detail for that device. We can get another curve here. This is going to be drain current versus gate source voltage. The drain current's on the vertical axis in milliamps. The gate source voltage is on the horizontal axis in volts. I'm going to change the uh, test a little bit here. Gate source voltage is going to vary from 2.8 volts to 3.6 volts, but I'm only going to do 25 points per trace because this, this goes a little slow and uh, don't want to take too much time and I'm going to reduce it uh, to three traces. You'll get the idea with that. You have complete control of what, uh, what kind of test it's going to run. Here we go. This is the curve for drain source voltage at 12 volts. Now we're doing 7.2 volts. And finally, 2.4 volts. You don't see a curve being drawn there because it's actually right on top of the blue curve, but it'll pop out on the right-hand side as we, because the, the range is extended for that particular voltage. And here it is in green. As you can see, the characteristic curve has the exact same shape for all three of them, uh, but a wider range. Very, very useful information. I don't know of another tester in this price range that, that provides this level of detail I don't know of it because no, no such thing exists. Uh, DCA75 is, is really a wonderful machine and uh, very uh, cost effective. Gives you a lot of information that you can't get any other way.